Match day in the Premier League. It's Manchester City versus Crystal Palace. Palace breaking my heart on my career mode on FIFA 22. Hopefully City can beat them when Abinio FC couldn't. Had a look at the lineup, which has just come out looking good for me. It's probably City's strongest side uh, based on current form uh, because Jesus is playing a bit better than Mares at the moment. Mares not struggling this season necessarily, but not necessarily performing to the heights we know he can perform at. So very happy with the side. Always love to see Foden. Uh, in the City side, he did miss a penalty against West Ham. News flash, City out the Etihad Cup, not Foden's fault at all. I thought he changed the game when he came on actually, and it was up to the uh, team to win the game 90 minutes prior to the penalties. Uh, so City knocked out on penalties by West Ham in the League Cup. Sad times, hopefully City can get a win today. I'm going to predict a 2-1, by the way, to Man City Palace, and not an easy opposition at all. Uh, they got a point at the Emirates uh, last week or the other week, so they're a very good side. Uh, Vieira, City, ex-City legend, managing them. Uh, but yeah, still confident City got enough to win it. Probably wise, uh, yeah, I Still huge ticketing issues at City. Uh, my ticket just didn't work today for whatever reason. Missed the first couple of minutes, but we're heading into the stadium now. Okay, Manchester City have just lost. They've lost against Crystal Palace 2 0 in the Premier League. It's Halloween, and how apt is it? Because that was a horror show from Manchester City. Just a few weeks ago, some of the best back to back performances I've ever seen City play away against Stamford Bridge, away against PSG, away against Anfield. Incredibly tricky fixtures, and I thought they outplayed their opposition in all of those games. Didn't get the win in every single one. In fact, they only got the win in one. But point still stands they played excellently today it's probably the worst I've seen City play since I think when they lost against Brighton last season I can't remember what the exact term um, score was 4-1 or something I don't know but either way truly horrendous display from City I'm about to go into a little bit of a rant so if you're used to seeing the happy go lucky nobbins uh, look away now because <laughs> I'm not happy but let's start actually by saying Crystal Palace did deserve the win. I don't think that's in dispute. City barely created anything. Well done to Palace. You deserve the win. 
you deserve the win. So now let's move on to City, what I actually want to talk about. I'm going to do player ratings, rating the away fans. But first, let's start with just a little discussion about some of my pet peeves and just some of the individual performances overall, really. Laporte, I think, is Man City's best defender. I think it's better than Diaz, better than Cancelo, better than Walker, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. He was truly atrocious today, truly atrocious. He was at fault for the first goal, dill dilly dallying, no idea what he's doing, just gives it away, tries to make up for it over the last ditch uh, challenge, but then it's just it's too little, too late, and Palace score on the counter attack. Just such a, a needless goal to give away. City was just their own worst enemy today, it's just such a needless goal uh, to give away. Uh, and then, obviously, just to go 1 0 down, be like, oh, you know, 1 0. Even if you go in the half time 1 0, you, you still, it's still Man City. They should still get the victory overall. And what does he do in like the 45th minute plus extra time? He, he just brings him down and gets red carded. Bad positioning, bad decision making. I'd rather it be 2 0 uh, at half time than. Uh, then 10 men on the pitch. I don't really know what he was thinking there, um, but that just solidified his truly woeful performance that will be reflected in the player ratings. So disappointed with uh, Laporte because he was actually uh, woeful today, um, as was Cancelo. Offensively, he was awful today. None of his balls into the box were doing anything. They were just totally off target, off point. Even if City had like some danger men in the box, like someone like a Haaland or even an Andy Carroll to head it in, didn't matter because Cancelo was finding no one uh, very rare from him uh, to do that in, in fairness, but every single thing he did today was rubbish. Even when he went for like a long shot, just totally over, so poor. Rodrigo kept getting caught in possession, I thought. Walker had a decent game in the second half. He basically shut down Zaha for basically the entirety of the second half, so I thought Walker did well. Uh, Bernardo went missing. De Bruyne, there's something wrong with De Bruyne. There's something wrong. I don't think he's fully fit. He got that injury. Uh, to his ankle, I think, and he's still not 100% fit, no way. It was similar to West Ham in the League Cup when he went off and Foden came on. The game changed as if KDB had just been brought on or if he's just been taken off. Uh, he is City's best player in terms of overall quality, but in terms of execution this season, there is still something very wrong there. And I think he just needs uh, a couple of games on the bench now or even just uh, totally rested because he definitely needs to 100% recover. There's no point playing him if he's not fit and clearly he's not fit because there's something going on there. Foden was asked to play as the uh, striker, the centre forward again today. Is that his long-term role? Definitely not. Can he play it to a degree? Yes, but he's not amazing at it all, all the time because he's not a striker at the end of the day. Uh, so that is still an issue that City need to properly resolve. Fran Torres is injured. He did look good in that role earlier in the season. Foden's been asked to do it now. Grealish, I love Grealish. He's, he has been fantastic for City this season. Last couple of games though, he's, he's gone missing. Um, he's much less effective than he was playing for Villa, which makes sense because the whole play was based around him at Villa. But for City, last couple of games, he's just been a passenger really, not really been uh, doing as much as I would have uh, hoped he would, not getting on the ball enough, not creating enough. Even in terms of like the simple stuff like being fouled, he doesn't even get fouled nearly as much as he used to. And today was much more than just, oh, City need a striker, City need a striker, which is still true. But even if they had Robert Lewandowski today, or like prime Aguero or prime Alan Shearer, no, nothing was being created. I don't know what the exact stats are, but I guarantee that Palace's, obviously their goals are higher than City's, I guarantee their XG, and I guarantee that their um, either chance or big chances created uh, is also much higher uh, than City's, because I can't really think of any genuine big chances that City actually had in the game. I think the closest was when, uh, you know, Cancelo or Rodri had like a, a long shot at goal, which was hit straight to the goalkeeper, best chance which wasn't actually a chance because it was a rule was offside. Uh, it was a lovely switch by John Stones, by the way, and Laporte needs to be careful now because he may, in his early days, obviously, but he may have lost his whole starting position in the side because John Stones came on at, for KDB and he immediately became City's best player and City's most creative player. He pinged the ball into Foden, who it would turn out would be just offside, uh, who then played it into Jesus and it was a goal. We all celebrated like mad and then I was sad because it was um, offside from VAR. Um, but when John Stones, a centre-half, is coming on to make it a back three and he immediately plays one ball and, and already City are in, you know there's something wrong there, you know there's something going on. And City actually looked better when they went to a back three, even with ten men. They looked much better in the second half than the first. Uh, they were getting at Palace a bit more. Maybe not creating more, but so, I mean, it was a bad performance either way, but they were certainly better in the second half than the first. But overall, not a good day for City. 
hopefully it's just a one-off i don't want to just blame like you know fatigue because that's a really lazy uh thing to say but a lot of those players did look tired but those players didn't look um, up to their usual uh, standards to say de bruyne especially he needs a rest grealish has started basically every single game for city he needs a rest and the only saving grace really is that liverpool dropped two points today well city dropped three chelsea won and it's the manchester derby next united do play spurs later today be interested to see what that result is but United, uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's United have a tendency uh, to beat Pep City. Um, hopefully, you know, that's basically a must win now before maybe you'd go, oh, you know, a point sort of all right. But I think that's a must win now uh, at Old Trafford. Not the easiest, well, unless your name's Liverpool. Um, uh, so lots of pressure now. Now let's move on to uh, rating the Palace away fans. Very good for the first five minutes. They were, they were chanting before they scored. And then obviously after they scored, there was lots more chanting. Um, I've been to Sellers Park before. For me, it's probably the best home support I've um, witnessed. Um, I was a bit disappointed with them, I think, but I think it's mainly due to my impression of uh, Palace fans rather than their actual performance. Uh, there weren't that many. Uh, as with most of the other clubs they've attended the Etihad this season, they only filled out the bottom tier that they are allocated, uh, but they were quite loud uh, for large portions of the game. I think they were better than Arsenal uh, when they came to the Etihad. Uh, so I will say 2-0, uh, it's 2-0, I will say 7 out of 10 for Palace's uh, away support and that actually puts them to the top of the table so far. Let's rank the players, Edison couldn't, I don't think he could do anything for either goal uh, on first viewing, he did a good save actually in the second half so I think he gets a 7 out of 10, distribution wasn't the best but it wasn't the worst today. Cancelo I thought was poor, 6 is an average, he was, no, nothing worked for Cancelo today I don't think. Um, offensively, defensively, I think he deserves a four. Sounds harsh, but I think he deserves a four. Diaz, don't think he actually made too many errors. Um, I'll give him a seven. Uh, Walker, thought he did well against Zaha in the second half. He gets a seven. Um, Laporte gets a two. I mean, he was at fault for the first goal and he got red carded. I don't think I'm giving it any higher than a two. Uh, Rodri, kept giving the ball away. Kept getting caught out like last season's Rodri. Five, Bernardo, uh, not necessarily his fault for anything, but wasn't really creating anything. Running around as always, he gets a six. Um, De Bruyne, poor, five. Grealish and Jesus, I can't really remember what they did. I think Grealish did put in a couple good balls, but not good enough. I think Jesus, same story. I give them both a five. Foden, struggled at striker. Did slightly better on the wing, but again, it wasn't his day. I give Foden a five as well. Um, I'll do a manager rating as well. Um, I don't really think Pep could have done anything, um, really. I think it was the team just looked so sluggish and so off the pace. Um, I thought Pep got it right in the terms of the tactics in the second half, switching to that back three, uh, bringing on Stones. Speaking of Stones, he gets an eight. I thought he did really well when he came on. As I say, basically created that. You know, what, should, what could have and should have been a goal um, had uh, Foden stayed on the side. Uh, so Stones uh, gets a good performance, but... I don't think any of them really had a good performance, unfortunately. Um, and it does mean that it's, it's a big slip up. It's a big slip up in the title race, but we're very, we're very early on. We're very early on. If you enjoy match day vlogs and you enjoy in-depth football videos, this is the channel for you. Make sure to subscribe for more. Uh, hit the like button if you did like uh, this video. Also make sure to follow on Twitch for regular football watch-alongs and gaming streams. And until next time, guys, I'll see you next time. Hopefully City can actually win next time.